Right, so that makes a lot of sense with the self-awareness, but when it comes to a marriage and being involved with somebody else, how do you identify your partner's values? Well, so both of you have to sit down. You, you both have to sit down and write down and you ask yourself the question, what are the top 20 things you value most in a person? And so they'll tell you all kinds of things. They'll tell you, oh, like the women will say tall, dark and handsome, looking like um, Denzel Washington or something of that nature, or The Rock, right? And um, the guy will say, oh, he wants him to look like Beyonce, dance like um, Shakira and, you know, have all of that. But those, those, that's, uh, that aside, what about the woman do you like? What, what can you, what do you like that is not tangible? It's not something you can touch. It's not beauty. It's not, it's something in there. And so they start telling you things like, oh, she should be honest, she should be God-fearing, she should be funny. And you write all of these th things down. And then after you have a long list, it could be 10 different things, it could be 20 different things. Then you start asking, would you marry a guy that was funny but wasn't God-fearing? And he says, no. Then you know that God-fearing is of higher demand, right? And so you do that again. Would you take a guy that is God-fearing but wasn't wealthy, wasn't wealth conscious. And she says, yes, okay, fine. Would you take a guy that was God-fearing, but was dishonest? And she says, well, if he's God-fearing, he has to be honest. Okay, fine, so we take that. Would you take a guy that was God-fearing, but he will put his religion above his family? And she says, no, I won't take that. So you realize that family comes first instead of God-fearing. And you repeat this all over again until you have a clear hierarchy of what comes first, what comes next what comes third and once you have that you want to get to know at least the top five values of your partner right and see how closely that matches with yours now if there are values that she has that you don't have then it might be a good idea for you to introduce those values for yourself so i'll give you a personal example my wife loves love right for me i just think love is rather inconvenient like for like not, not for, like, love for me is kind of abstract before I got married. Like, yeah, anybody can say they're in love, but you're in love today, then you divorce tomorrow. Then what was that love about, right? So, but she really is into, you know, those outward display of emotion, the kind of stuff you see on Telemundo and Z World, right? So I had to bring that in and an attempt to model behaviors of love so that I can express this to her the way she wants to be loved. Because for people that are Christians, they say, oh, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And they tend to get it twisted to mean that do things for your partner that you would do for yourself. But everybody's different. So you, you don't want to love your wife the way you love yourself. You want to love her the way she wants to be loved. And so first of all, understanding what she values is the first criteria. Before you start understanding her love language or anything of that nature, right? You must understand what she values first. Okay, so now with these values, definitely there will be some expectations that come along for you and your partner. Let's talk about managing your expectations in a marriage. Oh boy, that's, that's a big one, because when we talk about expectations, it's really broad, and expectations is really life itself. We expect to have children, for example. We expect our children to be obedient to us. These are expectations, right, that we either came up with or society foisted upon us and said, this is what it's supposed to be, right? But different people have different ways of dealing with expectations. And that's just the truth. 